I commented that there were three unfairnesses in the makeup of our house. These were the hereditaries, the bishops, and the unlimited and unfettered power that the Prime Minister has to make appointments to this house. The greatest unfairness I continue to feel is this last one, which is both very powerful and vested in one person. The changes proposed in the government's manifesto would add power to the Prime Minister, so that what was already a very large power, without precedent in any other liberal democracy, is increased. The vesting of great power in one person, history shows, can cause problems. And however comfortable we might feel about our freshly elected government today, this is not a satisfactory state of affairs going forward for a major liberal democracy. In 2017, the noble lord, Lord Burns, <coughs> says looking around for him, but, the noble lord, Lord Burns, and his committee <coughs> produced a very measured report about the size of the House and, by implication, some sort of conventional cap on the Prime Minister's prerogative powers. We unanimously agreed this outstanding contribution to the thinking about these difficult issues in this chamber. Many of those who are a part of that unanimous agreement are on the front benches of the major groupings present, present today. And we will, I look forward to hearing from the noble Lord, Lord Burns later on, who will pick up that theme, I'm sure. As we seek to navigate the difficult waters and balance constitutional security, the proper relationship between Parliament and the Executive, and the words of the Government manifesto, all of these factors will need to play a part, and all be taken account of. My Lords, it's an honour to respond to the gracious speech, and uh, I, with others on these benches, wish to welcome uh, the noble and learned Lord Hermer, the Attorney General, and, and thank him for a really moving a maiden speech, not least his desire that we listen and respect one another and work consensually. And, and like others, I want to focus on one thing, which is rebuilding trust in democracy itself. The turnout on the 4th of July was shockingly low. Research also shows a 13 per cent gap in turnout between constituencies with the highest and lowest proportions of home ownership. Furthermore, an estimated 400,000 people were turned away at the polling station because they didn't have the right ID. These are alarming statistics, and I look forward uh, to the changes outlined in the government's manifesto that could start to address these, including reducing the voting age to 16. But it's the link to poverty that causes me the gravest concern. It shows that a large proportion of our population do not feel they have a stake in our national life, nor much of a future to look forward to, and therefore for them voting just isn't worth it. There are things in the King's speech about poverty, therefore, that I welcome, particularly the Children's Wellbeing Bill, the plans for free breakfast clubs, but I must take this opportunity to join others uh, in calling for the removal of the two-child limit to universal credit, because this is the biggest driver of rising child poverty and has a big impact on trust in our democracy. I have often spoken about the power of devolution, not just to shift power away from the centre, but what devolution does is shift perspective and enables consensual politics to thrive and enables us to take a longer view. The recently established York and North Yorkshire Combined Authority, where I live and serve, is already starting to demonstrate the difference that this can make for rural as well as urban communities, and I therefore wholeheartedly welcome the establishment of a council of the nations and regions. And also, you won't be surprised to hear from these benches, we also welcome the extension of the Lord's Spiritual Women's Act 2015. The tone of the government's manifesto and what we heard from the noble and learned Lord today speaks about governance as service. And this is so important for building trust in our democracy. No one meant it to happen, but there has been an erosion of respect for the rule of law, of convention, of the weighty responsibility to tell the truth. However, the nature of our uncodified constitution is that it relies as much on conventions that are derived from tradition 
as anything else. Therefore, it's up to us. It's up to us to respect each other, to listen to each other, to build consensus, to work together. Uh, and I want to take a lead from the noble and learned Lord and say that we can be part of this in the way that we conduct our business in this House. And yes, there are legitimate questions about the House itself. First, we are a scrutinising chamber, offering wisdom and a balance of power. And it is for this incoming government and the ministers appointed to this House to ensure that this role is properly understood. Second, we ought to better represent the breadth of the nation we serve. 24% of our membership have links to London, 22% to the South East, but only 3% to the North East. Thirdly, I don't know what we do about it, perhaps Lord Burns will tell us in a moment, there are just too many of us, and, and, and that is not good for us. And fourthly, while on these benches, we do value the particular role as Lord Spiritual that we make. We do think that other faith communities could be better represented as well. And we believe that there does need to be a wide debate about the reform of this House. And we are confident that when this happens, the place of faith in public life will be seen to matter. We look forward very much to working with other members across this House in addressing these issues. Finally, I want to pay tribute to something that it would be so easy to take for granted, um, which shows that the underlying strength of our democracy, which does need to be rebuilt and renewed, and that was the respectful and peaceful transition of power from one government to another that we witnessed a couple of weeks ago. Um, for me, that is a great sign of hope of what we can be at our best, working together for the common good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh,